When you read the Bible, you're not actually reading the Bible. See, a year and a half ago, I visited Dr. John J. Collins, Joel Baden, and Elaine Pagels. And on that trip, I asked many questions of them. A lot of them came from Patreon fans. So thank you for joining the Patreon. But I asked him these questions and he pointed out, you're not actually reading the Bible. But let's see what Dr. Baden has to say himself. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to check out our description and come help us join our journey here on trying to educate people more on the subject matter. Professor Joel Baden, you hurt my feelings, you know? You told me that I'm not really reading the Bible when I pick up the Gideon Bible right here next to this uh, bed here at the hotel. Uh, I I'm teasing, but you would have hurt my feelings seven or eight years ago when I was a fundamentalist evangelical Christian who was a KJV onlyist about 12 years ago. Huh. Yeah, so I believed uh, God preserved his word. Didn't you know? He would never let his word, you know, go away. Took that stuff literal. So you told me, though, that we're not reading the Bible when we're reading the Bible. <laughs> Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're not reading... The, it's not that you're not reading the Bible. You're not reading the Bible. Ooh. Right? Like, um, <laughs> so, I mean, back it up. Okay. Uh, when you pick up an English translation of the Bible, first of all, you're picking up an English translation of the Bible. So you're not reading the original anything. And choices are being made without you knowing it constantly, right? Choices that are influenced by the translator's theological perspectives, historical, you know, guesses, um, all kinds of things. Lack of knowledge, right? Um, there are words we don't know the meaning of. Translators got to, like, take a crack at it. Um, there are, you know, how does the Bible begin, man? What's the, what are the first words of the Bible in English? Hit me. Um, in the beginning, God. Yeah, finish the, in the beginning. Oh, in, in the, the beginning, beginning God, God created the heavens and the earth. All right, that's good enough. Right? That's how your King James Bible begins. It's good stuff. Uh, implies that there's nothing before creating heaven and earth, right? Right. Creation out of nothing. Ex nihilo. Right? Because right. that's, like, what the people who translated the King James believed. My English translation, the Jewish Publication Society version, begins, when God began to create heaven and the earth. That's different. Like, there could be stuff before creation then. Uh, and in fact, Judaism thinks that there was. So like, now which one of those is right and wrong? Neither. You know which one's right? The Hebrew is right. Right? But the Hebrew... Right, could go either way, right? So your translation is already an interpretation. It's not the Bible, it's a Bible, right? Like the King James is a creation out of nothing Bible and the JPS is a not creation out of nothing Bible. Can I probe you real quick here with Don't you? Please don't call it that. Well, go ahead. yeah, you're right. That's a good point. Um, you said the Hebrew is right, but here's the here's the trickier, trickier part. Yeah, I'm not, I, hold on, I haven't gotten there okay, yet. Okay, okay. I'm gonna get there. <laughs> Wait for it. Okay. So you're reading an English translation with the choices the translator has made. Right. right. That you, as the lay reader, don't know are choices because you don't know the thing it's being translated from or what the other alternatives are. So you're being presented with a version of the text that is not necessarily the version. Right? There is no the version. There's only, every translation is just a version. Okay, so that's one problem. What text is being translated? Right. The text that's being translated for you is the Masoretic text, right? That is to say, this... Now, relatively, this, the form of the Hebrew that was standardized in the 11th century or so. That's the 11th century, of course, AD, right? Uh, not the 11th century uh, BC. So you're reading a translation of an 11th century manuscript, right? Uh, that was itself an attempt, uh, it, at least in, in, in many cases, an attempt to like fix the problems of all the manuscripts that had come before it. Right. So before the 11th century, a whole bunch of different Hebrew manuscripts, with all kinds of varying kinds of terms. And someone was like, let's like get ourselves like a, a, a nice, tight, clean. We'll get all the problems out. So like somebody, there's decisions making being made there by humans about which text is right. Virtually every English translation is based on one manuscript, right? one medieval 11th century 
like a thousand years ago, 11th century manuscript. Um, it's called, we call it the Leningrad Codex because it happens to now reside in, in Leningrad. That Hebrew text is one manuscript, right? It's manuscripts, not printed copies, right? This isn't the kind of thing where you run off a million copies of the same thing, so every text is the same. Every manuscript is a tiny bit different. So my, cop, my English translation is of the Leningrad Codex, but if I did an English translation of a different manuscript, some stuff would be maybe a tiny bit different because every manuscript has problems or you know differences. And manuscripts, being manuscripts, like just have mistakes in them, right? So when you read your King James and you get to Genesis 22, which is the sacrifice of Isaac, near sacrifice of Isaac, and Abraham has lifted his knife to slay his son and the angel stops him and says, don't do it. And uh, Abraham at that point lifts his eyes and he sees a ram. In the King James, he sees a ram behind him. Right? It's a little bit weird. And he sees a ram behind him. Right? Uh, like he lifted his eyes and Right, saw a ram. Uh, it's, it's weird. Uh, but that's because the King James is doing a, a literal translation of this Leningrad Codex, which has a typo right there. It's not a ram behind him. It's a ram, right? In, in, in Hebrew, this is the difference of like a tiny little tick of a line between the word achar, behind, and the word achad, one. That's all. It's a tiny, it's just a typo, right? It's, it's, it's like in English, uh, I don't even know, it's like we don't even have letters that are, are even this close. It's like mistaking an O for a U. It's like mistaking a capital I for an L if you're not using, you know, like they're yeah. nearly, nearly identical letters, right? Um, the Leningrad Codex has a typo there. Instead of he lifted his eyes and he saw a ram, it says he lifted his eyes and he saw a ram behind. The King James says behind, but it's a mistake. It's a mistake in that one manuscript. Right. My Jewish Publication Society version says a ram. It doesn't say behind because they know about the mistake, uh, you know, 500 years later or 400 years after the King James, like they figured it out, like we all knew about it. And so they fixed it because they recognized it was just, a, just an error. So who's reading the, the Bible, right? Your Bible's got a typo in it, man. Like, and mine doesn't, kind of, but like, also the Hebrew text that yours was translating had a typo in it. And other Hebrew texts from that period don't. And then what do we do about the fact that the 11th century manuscript that we're looking at is from the 11th century, like it's a thousand years old. I got manuscripts that are 2000 years old. Shouldn't they be worth more? We call those the Dead Sea Scrolls. But which manuscript am I supposed to be like, am I supposed to be just be reading the Dead Sea Scrolls? Is that like the real text? Mm -hmm. Like it's different in all kinds of ways. Not only is the Dead Sea Scrolls text different from our current Hebrew text, um, but the Dead Sea Scrolls sometimes preserved multiple versions of the same Hebrew text. So for example, uh, I can find a text of the book of Samuel from the Dead Sea Scrolls that looks a lot like the book of Samuel that is in my Bible today. But I can also find from the Dead Sea Scrolls a book of Samuel that's pretty different from my current Hebrew Bible. They're both 2,000 years old. Which one of them is the right one? And what happens when I tell you that the one that doesn't look like the he my current Hebrew text looks a lot like the 3rd century BC Greek translation of the Bible? Because the oldest text we have, not in manuscript, but the Greek translation, the Septuagint, is from the third century BC, before the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, I don't have a manuscript of it from them, from then, but that's when that translation happened. Since the Septuagint isn't the same as the Hebrew, that is the Greek and the Hebrew, the Greek seemed to be translating a different version of the Hebrew than the Hebrew I have now. Should I give more credit to the Greek than to the Hebrew? Sometimes, what if I really like the book of Jeremiah as I'm reading it in my Hebrew right now? Too bad, the Septuagint, the Greek version, is like a sixth shorter. There's got all sorts of stuff in the Hebrew that's not in the Greek. Right. Like, which one is the Bible? Is it the longer version of Jeremiah or the shorter version? Right. They both got claims to antiquity 
Uh, the Septuagint Greek may have a better claim. I don't know. Maybe not. Like, which? what about the two versions of Samuel? They're both equally attested at Qumran, right? At the Dead Sea community, which means those people thought that both were good. Which one's the Bible? Ah, like they're kind of both the Bible. Um, point is, when you pick up a Bible in like the pews or at home or whatever, your English version of the Bible, when you pick up the King James, you're reading, in the case of the King James, reading a uh, 17th century translation of an 11th century manuscript of a text that was not stable even a thousand years before that. Like choices are being made all the way through here. Um, and of course, you know, that's not even to get into, and I should have, you know, the question of like translations are based not just on the text, but on the, you have to know how Hebrew works, right? Hebrew is, is consonants and vowels like English, except the vowels aren't written down usually. Uh, so, you know, if, if you're basing your translation on the way that somebody has put vowels into the text, that was a choice that was made, you know, a thousand years ago, and, but doesn't tell me anything about what they meant 2000 years ago or 3000 years ago when it was written, right? There's all sorts of human intervention happening along the way as people are collating manuscripts and putting vowels into manuscripts and translating them and selecting them and transcribing them and making typos and, you know, choosing which ones they prefer. I don't know what, you know, I don't know which one the Bible really is, uh, but for you to take your version of the text that you happen to say and be like, this is the true one. That's a hard case to make, man. <laughs> yeah. Or, even if you're not saying that specific one is the true one, which people do that, Orthodox Jews, as well as like King James only as Christians and other people. But some people will find that nuance, right? And there's new apologetics, I feel like, that, that are, well, they're maybe not new. Maybe this goes back to the early church, for example, to some degree. But they'll go, well, yeah, there's nuance, but we're not missing the point. Uh, most of those examples, for example, aren't that relevant to a point that it changed behind him or a ram. Same thing, same Eh, you know, it's about For the sure. same thing. But then there's some stuff. And th that's when we start to, what I like to do is to see the stuff, right? You know what I'm in, you, you kind of get what I'm defining stuff as when I say that. Problems. Not just it's behind him or in front of him. I'm talking, they've cut out stuff. You're, that, you're, ta you're talking how many deities are there? Right. <laughs> right. So we were talking about this, we were talking about this earlier, right? Like, uh, uh, sometimes... Sometimes the Septuagint or the Dead Sea Scrolls, in their difference from the Hebrew, uh, preserve some stuff that, like, in the tradition of the Hebrew text, got uh, piously massaged out of existence, right? Um, the, the example that we, we come to all the time is in, the, is in Deuteronomy 32, um, where there's a reference made to this, uh, to this myth of Elyon, the high god, uh, apportioning you know, the lands and the and deities um, uh, and peoples. Uh, and it says, uh, and it says there, and if you read the Hebrew, it says there, you know, and, and uh, divided something, something like divided the nations according to the sons, sons of Israel, of, according to the sons of Israel, which makes zero sense, right? What does it mean to divide all of the nations according to the sons of Israel, right? That's not a meaningful sentence, really. And there was not, there was no way to understand it until we compare it with the Greek text that doesn't say sons of Israel, says, says, uh, the, says the sons of the gods, right? Which is to say, really, sons of gods is just a, a way of saying gods, right? The, the divine beings. But there's the myth, right? We divide, divide up the nations and, and the gods, right? We apportioned the nations among the various deities, right? Someone in the Hebrew tradition was like, we don't have various deities, get rid of that. And that's what came into the King James, for example. And like, um, uh, and so it's, you know, knowing the Septuagint and the and Dead Sea Scrolls, which also preserves the, you know, according to divided, to, according to the God's uh, language, right? The text that we claim as the, the text has been manipulated. Uh, every text has been manipulated. Right. Right. But some of them, right. The, in some cases we can see where like somebody has for reasons of piety, 
manipulate the text so that it doesn't preserve ideas that are not part of an orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. And so what's so interesting, again, in terms of English translations, is the King James will say, right, according to the sons of Israel. But the NRSV, knowing the Greek, says, says according to the, you know, divine beings or something like that, and then just footnotes it and like explains what's what's going on there. Um, so like, again, the way we access text not is not just the translation, it's also paratext, right? Is there commentary attached, right? There's all kinds of things. You're not, and nobody's reading just like, the straight Bible, the Bible. And I don't even know how to do, how you, how are you even defining it? Right? Like right. the earliest thing that was ever written before somebody started messing around with the text. How many, we've had this conversation all day long. Yep. Every single text in the Bible has been altered. Even the earliest ones we have, especially the <laughs> earliest ones we have, right? The earliest ones have been altered the most, right? Because there's been the most time for them to be updated and changed and expanded and reframed and all of these things. Um, so like, those, anyone looking for a pure Bible, you've, there's a, you, you've, you've got to come up with some essentially like artificial point where you're like, it's the real Bible up to this moment. But I don't know when that moment is or why it should be there, right? Is it the real Bible? Like it, it, it's okay for the Bible to be expanded and expanded and changed and changed and changed until the Dead Sea Scrolls? It clearly has to be after that because like we know there's differences between Dead Sea Scrolls and our current Bible. Uh, like... The New Testament? Nope. Like, I know it, like, first of all, the New Testament has its own story of things being changed. Looking at you, end of Mark, right? Looking at you, like the story in John about the, yeah, I mean, you, you, like, yeah. you, you probably know all of the, all of the places, right? Where uh, the New Testament has been, uh, has been, has been manipulated also. But like, it's just an ongoing process. People have been doing it forever. It's not until, and translation is part of that same story, right? Tra every translation is, again, manipulation, interpretation, reframing, recontextualizing. It's just been done in a slightly different medium. Where do you think you're going to find this pure text that's the real deal, right? We don't have it, aside from the fact that our earliest manuscripts in Hebrew are, you know, from the second century BC. Mm -hmm. And our earliest manuscripts in Greek are later than that. Like, we don't have access to any of that stuff. And like... Once you recognize that the text keeps getting changed, you got to recognize that like it, that's going to go back forever. And we just, we're simply never going to access like the true thing underneath. Thank you. Mm -hmm.